So in this tutorial, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the structure of GameMaker projects and all the things that are popping up in your um, changes in your in your history when you're making objects and sprites. Like, what what do all these files actually mean and reflect? And also just point to, I guess, like warning areas or stuff to be careful of based on my experience of maintaining a project with uh, source control. And, you know, just day to day, just, you know, from saving and reloading this and trying to push stuff off and just some weird stuff can happen. So I wanted to talk about that. So uh, first of all, let's make another object and then have a look at what it means to add an object. So I'm going to call this OBJ Bean. Okay, so I've made the object. Let's not do anything else yet. Let's come back to here, have a look at the changes. And you can see I've got two changes from doing that. Some resources are different. You'll get other stuff. Sprites, for example, add other things. Objects will just add this YY file and it will make a change to the YYP file. This is like the, the core project file. Uh, we'll talk about that one second, I think. I think we'll start with this one. So this one, this is kind of like uh, the object's struct, I suppose, like all of the properties of what it is to be an object in GameMaker will come up here. So these are different for every resource. They're all YY files, .yy, but all the resources need different properties. So in the engine, you know, what does it mean for us to make an object? I need a visible flag. I need something, I need a way to assign a sprite. I need to save that sprite. I need code blocks and I need to save that somewhere. Where does that get saved? Uh, and same for sprites, you know? So if I'm, if I'm adding a new sprite, if I'm adding a new frame, I need a place to save that. So like I said, that's, they're, they're all different. And let's have a little look at some of the object stuff because it's fun to mess around with. So it is coming up in our diffs at the moment, in our changes, but we can also look at the file itself. And I'm going to show you that. So let's go uh, right click that and do show in Explorer. Of course, you could have um, gotten to it the other way. So we could have gone to the project itself and then objects uh, OBJ Bean. So at the moment, I have uh, VSC downloaded Visual Studio Code, which I would recommend. So if you're looking for a code editor, that one is probably the most popular one. I think it's free and does a great job but you don't need it necessarily. So I'm going to just stick to Notepad and I'll show it to you in Notepad. Okay, so this this is what a, the, the object is at the moment. Keep in mind that this this won't hot load um, stuff. If I, if I make a change, it's not going to be reflected unless I open it up again. But yeah, so at the moment, you know, it's sprite ID is nothing because of course it doesn't have a sprite. It's got those solid and visible uh, tags right there. It's got stuff about physics. It's got its event list. So, you know, if we add a create event, let's also assign it a sprite for fun. And then actually I need to reopen that, like I said. Oh, actually you can see that um, a GML file has popped up uh, as well. The create zero, which is a bit funny. You might be wondering what that zero is and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit in a second, but let's again, just open that back up. Uh, and you can see, so it's changed the sprite ID to a sprite. And it has also changed the event list. So before this was empty, um, it, it just looked like that, but now it has an event. And events are interesting. If you've ever used some of the event perform functions to, I guess, artificially perform an event while you're not in it. So for example, we can run draw. Then there's actually two arguments here. You can see, so there's a type and then a number, and that's reflected here, type and number. And if I uh, open this up, ooh, okay, use the online one. Events are quite interesting to read about. So you can see, um, for example, there's only one type of create constant, but um, some of the other events have variations on them. So like the step event has just the normal step, but it also has the begin and the end. And those are enumerated. Just like the draw event. Uh, if we come down to draw, where is it here? There's different kinds of draw. There's begin, end, pre, post, and the GUI. So the GUI is actually like a variant on that draw. So yeah, so if I type in ev draw begin, you know, I can run the begin draw event from within the create event. Uh, it wouldn't actually doing, do anything because I think you can't actually draw stuff outside of a draw event, but we can run the code in it. But that is why it doesn't make sense for the create event. It's, it's, um, its type is zero, which must be the, um, constant value for what ev create actually means. And then it's 
number. But yeah, if I added, actually, let's, let's try and add that draw begin just to see what it looks like. And I'll just refresh that. Oh, and it actually pops up here too. So you can see we've got draw and then underscore 72. That's a bit weird. It doesn't say begin. Uh, let's have a look at it in the notepad. And if we look in here, so we see there's that 72. So that must be the, um, the number for draw begin. So I don't know why it's that, but, um, that's, that's the constant that they've chosen. And then the, um, event type is eight. So that must mean draw. You start to recognize these a little bit as, as you're doing coding and doing stuff in GitHub, uh, desktop, because that is how it normally looks. The file name itself is what is popping up here which can make it a bit hard to find. So if I'm trying to find like draw begin, look at previous code from it, you know, like I, ha I would have to find that name and understand that name. So yeah, that's why it can be actually quite fun to look through all of this stuff and it kind of prompts you to experiment with that kind of thing. Some other interesting things even within here to point out is like the D&D um, tag is in here, whether this uh, event is written in drag and drop or in uh, GML. We have this field is interesting, so name. I don't know why that's there, because we can't name our events, and like putting a description doesn't actually change that. But perhaps in the future we'll actually be able to name these something, maybe. Because yeah, I don't know why it's there. I've never seen that field. Tags, I'm also not sure about. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm certainly not an expert in this kind of stuff. I've only ever really perused myself, but yeah, interesting stuff. So that is an object, a little look at what an object is. And you can see that the actual code for the object isn't stored in that YY file. These are just kind of like properties and like if it, if it needs to point to something that is more complicated, it will. And then that will be like a different file. And mostly um, when I'm doing coding, like these are the things that I'm generally looking at, like just big blocks of code that are changing, overriding, stuff getting cut and added. It's only when I'm changing resources itself or if we're adding new sprites or something, that's when we have to deal with that. And for me, adding sprites and adding objects is, is always the scarier part because of how much it changes the structure of a game maker project. Or, or even if you uh, move something in the resource tree, that is a move. Like, so if I, um, create a little subfolder here and let's just call this, uh, maybe spaceships and I, let's, let's put uh, confusingly, I've actually given that the rocket. I might just clear that. Let's give the rocket that rocket, and I'm going to drag that into spaceships. So if we have a look at, let's come back and go into, yeah, rocket. Open with notepad. So you can see that it's parent, and this isn't the same as its parent object ID. That would be its parent here, right? So if we assign that to obj bean, Give that a save. I'm gonna quit that, open it up again. Yeah, so its parent object is bean, but its parent here is actually its place in the resource tree. At the moment, it is right here under spaceships. So if we kind of, if we walk down the route of the project, which is like, so if we start off at nothing and then we walk down one of these, so objects, and then we have to walk down again, spaceships to get to rocket. And that's reflected here. So folders, objects, spaceships. That's where our um, object is located. If we were to move that back out or even to the root of the um, entire project. So like there and give that a save, reopen it. Yeah, it's um, parent is the root of the entire project, interestingly enough. And I'm going to go ahead and move it back to here. So moves like that often set off warning bells for me because I have grown to be accustomed to that kind of thing causing merge conflicts or strange behavior in Game Maker. But it is one to be aware of because, for example, if, if different people have different locations of this on different local branches or if you try to merge things in and you don't update that line for whatever reason, like the old parent was kept, um, just, you're going to get weird behavior. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Game Maker is able to resolve it and force it to move to the root, you might find, and then you'll just have to redo it. But sometimes it's not, and um, it might just fail to load the resource, and you'll have to do some sleuthing to correct that. 
Or um, you might get these weird ghost resources we've also had, where basically we thought that object got deleted, but something kept a reference to it. And those, they are weird. Like, that isn't supposed to happen. Like, Git is supposed to be able to resolve stuff like that. But yeah, when it comes to merge conflicts, human error can play into that. Or um, just the, you know, some redundant information was getting copied and it wasn't updated in, in different places. So I might go into uh, specific merge conflicts at a later time. This, I want to keep this more as just exploratory at the moment. So with that in mind, let's have a look at that YY file. So remember, we added that object, the um, OBJ bean. Uh, unfortunately, we've been playing around with some other objects, so it's not as clear. Those ones have nothing to do with our object bean. In fact, I could delete them right now, and I'm um, actually I might just quit the project and reopen. Uh, now that we've closed it, I'm going to discard those changes. So we've just got bean. We're going to come back to game maker. Yeah, and so now uh, we just have, although actually. Um, we have gotten these these changes um, as well here. So we've gotten some order changes these actually are, and this is actually because of, of our messing around. I could probably safely delete a lot of this, but I might keep it just to illustrate a point to you. Yeah, and I think it might also be our um, parenting, but like even from messing around a bit, even though we've deleted a lot of it, we've still changed the order that the sprites might have appeared or the objects might have appeared in the resource tree. And a lot of the time, it doesn't really matter. One thing that GameMaker is able to resolve pretty well are these order things. You can have duplicate numbers of this one. Strangely enough, you can change it. And once you open the project up again, it will solve that. So don't worry about those ones. And as you can see, I think like that one, for example, is different. Um, at the moment, it's nicely appearing in the same order. Sometimes that's not the case. But yeah, you can see, for example, all of that stuff has changed. I think because I added a folder. But if I move all of that out and I delete that and I give it a save, I wonder what would happen. I mean, it's still keeping it. Yeah, so I suppose that change to the order is just um, going to stick around now. So I might actually just discard and um, we're going to open up again. But this is what I'm talking about. And perhaps why a little bit why it can be overwhelming, like a bunch of stuff appears to have changed when you don't think that you've changed that much, um, but you do get used to it. So let's come back to a, to a nice easy example. Let's just add one object and I'm going to call it OBJ. Let's call this one surfboard, just so we've got a different name. Come back to here. Okay, and now we just have our basic changes. So like I said, here is all the properties of the surfboard, but there is also a note of it kind of you can think of it as in the yyp let's open up the yyp this one is a big one to know a little bit about because again this might be the source of a lot of conflicts especially adding sprites sprites are the bane of our existence i have to say um merging in new sprites and, and keeping branches up to date whenever our artists have to add sprites it's also i think reading forums occasionally it's it's the thing that often causes issues for people as well and i can only say that as you're working on source control in game maker and you add a new sprite especially if you're like dragging in like tens of sprites or something into game maker be careful that you're saving probably commit as often as you can and make sure that everything is okay like you might have to like close it reopen whenever you make a massive change to game maker Sorry, I uh, got on a tangent there, but yeah, let's try and have a look at the YYP file. So this is like the base project file. And yeah, if you, if you just go to your project in GameMaker, so mine's right here, or we could have done a show in Explorer, and you can see it's pointing to this thing, which you might just know is like the project file, right? And I, you know, you double click that to open it and that's the project. But this has actually got a bunch of information in it. So if we open it up, down here is a bunch of stuff that we probably won't run into too much. Here is all of that folder stuff, so like the order that I was talking about. This can be a bit weird. Uh, we've got room order nodes, I've uh, got a bit of config. And up here is the interesting bit. Honestly, like this bit and the folders bit are probably the most interesting for me. Although there is some other interesting stuff. So we've got like whether it's a D&D &D project, a drag and drop project, is ECMA. That's an interesting one. So ECMAScript is actually a, a scripting language of which the most popular implementation is JavaScript. So I, uh, I personally, I don't know why that's there, but I do find it interesting. 
a tutorial path. So again, I don't know what that's for, but perhaps if you opened a tutorial project in Game Maker, that might have more to say about that. But let's have a look at the resources. So you can see that when we added the um, surfboard, that thing that we added was was this an a, um, an entry in that resources list uh, here, right there. So you can see like all of our resources are here, regardless of the type. So we've got a room in here, we have a sprite, and we've got a rocket, uh, and we have the two objects here. Um, because there are two, you know, like that's the first one, this is the second one. These only had one, so they're both at uh, zero, presumably like within the um the order itself. So, but you can see that there's kind of like we're doubling up on um, references to like where our position in the project is. Uh, for example, let's let's actually add a um, another folder again, and we'll call this um, boards, and let's drag surfboard into here, save, and I'm going to reopen that. And we come to the surfboard. Okay. So interestingly, we didn't get like a parent change in the resource itself, but the boards folder has been added. But we don't have um, the surfboard's position like updated to there. That information is actually just in its YY file. So if we look in here, again, uh, where is it? In, whoops objects, surfboard, open that one up. Yeah, this is where GameMaker is keeping where it's located in the tree. So yeah, it's a little bit weird, I, I suppose. Not weird, but just like it's a decision of, of where they had to put that. And it, it just, um, yeah, if, if you get problems once you've moved something and like the parent has stuffed up and you have to chase that up, it can be hard to find stuff like that. So I hope that has oriented you a little bit. Because that is like the main source of problems that I've had in the past is with um, the order of stuff and the, the parents and stuff. Okay, great. And I guess if we just have a little look at sprites, they also have uh, a lot of complexity, I suppose, with them. So if we... Um, let's just discard that. I don't need that stuff. I'm going to reload the project again. Okay, and if we make another sprite, and I just because I just I just want to prove what exactly gets added when you add a sprite. So SPR uh, bean, and um, we go and have a look here. You can see like a bunch of we've gotten four changes. So again, we have a new entry in the YYP, which makes a lot of sense. We got a new PNG with a bunch of a weird tag here. This is actually its ID, and it's kind of like a, just a jumble of numbers because um. Well, that's how GameMaker has chosen to index stuff. Sometimes it indexes stuff just with um, like consecutive numbers starting from zero, but it, it's generating these IDs um, as a jumble of random numbers, just as an, an identifier for a PNG for for that file. Because like I think it's because the user doesn't really interact with that, and they don't want the user to. It's um, it doesn't need a name. It's just a thing that we need a reference to, like this this picture. There's this little layers thing, I think, because if we add a couple of pictures, just to confirm this, so like, a little smiley face. Actually, let's put, let's put just the white there, and I'll put the, um, let's rename this to face. Oop, face. And I go like that. Uh, so now it has two layers. So okay, so we've got the entire image, and it's a bit annoying, we can't see it. Let's do that blue, oop, wrong layer, blue. Yeah. So that must be the complete image. This must be just the face layer. So that must be the layer face. And then that must have been the default layer, right? That makes sense. And then the um, YY file for a sprite. Again, I have seen this get a bit weird. When um, sometimes when, when our artists add sprites or remove sprites, things can get corrupted. Even just unknown, I, I have no idea why it's happened, but like a adding a new image seems to have stuffed something up. Maybe something didn't save in time. And I have found that cutting and pa like literally just cutting and pasting sprites so that I can refresh some of these names and some of these references or deleting it um, and re-importing it does fix stuff. So the old like, um, you know, unplug and plug back in, it sometimes does fix things like that. Uh, same for objects or ghost objects and stuff like that. You might be able to track down the problem, like I said, and like manually update stuff. You know, if the problem was the parent, manually fix the parent. But yeah, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into sprites. 
All right, so now I want to play around with um, maybe like trying to cause a little bit of trouble so that I can just show you some of the weird stuff that might happen. So for example, let's say that we create a sprite, SBR light. Uh, and let's just draw like a little, ooh, it was meant to be a light bulb. Okay. Uh, definitely a light bulb. Uh, and then we go ahead and we actually, we delete all of this stuff, but we leave a reference to it in the YYP. And I'm going to do this while the project is closed. And we're going to see what happens when we reopen it. So let's delete those ones. I'm going to discard. So there's still a reference to it in here. So I wonder what Game Maker will do when I reopen. Okay. So for me, I have seen this warning a lot when something has stuffed up. When I've tried to delete something probably, or something was added and something isn't correct. Like there's a reference to something and it's not there or something doesn't have a complete reference or something like that. So as you can see, we've got a reference to this sprite thing uh, but we're missing this resource. It's not pointing to anything. We had a an entry to it in here. Uh, SPR light right here. But when Game Maker, you know, has to do the job of actually like presenting it to us, the user, it couldn't find that. So it couldn't give us the information. So Game Maker itself doesn't just crash. It just probably decides not to do anything with it and, and gives us a warning as the user. So if we hit OK. Uh, come back to here. That's a problem for us. We don't really want to push that change. We actually need to delete it ourselves now because that is going to stay in the project. So yeah, if you ever get like a resource fail to open, that might be the reason. So we'll want to um, open that up and just entirely delete it. And we reload. It should be fine now. Excellent. All right. So let's play a little bit more. Let's um. Let's make a new object. So OPJ uh, bean. And I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to put that object in this room. Uh, let's assign it a sprite, might as well. The bean. And let's put it in here. Okay, so now it is in the room. So now I wonder what will happen if we quit out of this and then remove the object itself. So you can see, actually, we haven't had a look at rooms yet, but um, if we open up the room text file, rooms also have a bunch of information in them. Uh, you'll see if you add tile layers, this can actually get quite enormous as it has a bunch of like ones and zeros for all the tiles in the room. Um, at the moment, it's quite tame though, and we can look through it. It itself has a drag and drop flag. Interesting, I guess, because you can code from within the room. Volume. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know you could control. I wonder what that actually does. Uh, the views themselves. So I think because Game Maker gives you like a bunch of default views, they're all in there. Maybe you could add even more this way. I'm not sure. Uh, the different layers of the room. I think by default, we only have the instances layer and then properties therein as well. The number of objects that are in them. So actually there it is. There's our OBJ bean in the instances layer. So we found it there. Interesting whether it has creation code. I think you can tint it. These are some of the qualities of that one instance, which is cool, whether it's visible. And here, instance creation order as well. So the order that it's creating all of our instances in. So there's actually a couple um, references to our instance in here. And you can see it's instance ID. So let's uh, do what I said. So let's um, simulate a bug, basically. Um, and I'm going to delete all of those changes. So delete the, actually, I'm not sure what that is um, being changed for. I suppose the sprite must have updated when we clicked on it. And yeah, we're just going to delete it from the YYP, the bean object itself. And we're going to leave it in the room. So delete all those, discard, and reopen. There we go. And so again, we get a resource load failure. So this one has a missing reference. So these aren't very useful. We know what the problem is already, but um, if you just opened up the project, you don't know where that 
reference actually is. You know that that's the problem. Something has a reference to OBJ Bean, but not where. Usually for us, it's usually in a room. Not many other things would have references to an object, like maybe maybe parents and children. Maybe sequences. I ha We haven't messed with sequences, though. But if we come to the room, and again, it's very obvious because we only did one thing to it, but you can see that there's a weird object here, a weird ghost. And you can see it there as well, where it has... Um, <laughs> it still has properties on it, weirdly enough, um, that you can update and stuff that must be still saved in the um, the room. But it's... What kind of an object is it? Is This object will not perform properly in the game and you probably will get bugs. This thing shouldn't be allowed to be here. We don't want that around. So if you see this, if you see a little weird question mark object in a room, that's probably... probably shouldn't be there. Although I suppose... um. Objects that don't have any sprites also look like that, but they will have what kind of object they are. So this thing with a blank object, this is a ghost. We shall delete that. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So that has returned us to order. Yeah, so I hope that was fun. Encourage you to deep dive into Game Maker. If you find anything interesting, let me know. Uh, until next time, have a good one, stay safe, and happy coding.